Hi guys, Kim Schofield here back with another video on my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be exploring some crafters workshop products. Um, we're going to be talking about using paper scraps to build a background and also how to use some oxide inks to create a background for my beautiful moth here. So I am starting out with some papers that my son actually created. Um, he loves coming and crafting with me, which I love. And so I've got these heavy cardstock papers that are covered with some embossing paste and some uh, ink sprays and all kinds of stuff. And so I wanted to use a portion of one of these papers to create a card. So I'm gonna cut a little piece out here. I kind of like the, the portion that has the script embossing paste through it here um, using uh, one of the Crafters Workshop stencils. And so I wanna use a little portion of that because it has some great texture in the background. And this is just um, about four and three quarters by four and three quarters, um, a square. But the colors, I, I kind of wanna marry these background colors so um, it looks a little more cohesive, like I meant to do something instead of just the drips in the background, which could be a good thing, uh, but not quite what I'm going for for my card. So I'm starting by um, attaching the paper and the stencil to a nonstick craft sheet using painter's tape. And the reason I'm doing that is that's a very thick paper and um, it was a little bit of warping that was going on there. And so I wanted to make sure that stayed still and wasn't moving around. So I'm just using some distress inks and I've got um, a pink, I think it's picked raspberry and a yellow and an orange, uh, rusty hinge. I'll put the colors down in the description. And I am, oh, mustard seed was my yellow. And I'm just rubbing that, those colors through the stencil. What I'm really trying to do is just create a background that has very similar color uh, look and feel, kind of looks like I purposefully, uh, you know, use these colors with that um, texture in the background with the embossing paste, like I meant to do it. <laughs> and wait till you see this card turned out, kind of the background part of the card went in such a different direction than what I had originally had in my mind. So my final card actually looks a little bit different than the photos that you're going to see at the beginning and the end. It's one of those things where I went away and thought about it and made a few changes. So you can see here, I didn't quite get as much pink as I wanted. More, a little bit more pink. Yes, I am crafting in my robe. And so I was trying really hard to keep my sleeves out of uh, the video, but they kind of snuck in there a little bit. You know, it was a Sunday evening, a little crafting in the jammies, you know, uh, you got to do it. So I'm just going around the edges with some gathered twigs, just adding a little bit of depth uh, to the edge there. And now I'm thinking that I want to highlight the text a little bit. And uh, this worked out really well. So I'm just using black archival ink very, very gently. I'm not pressing down at all. I'm just rubbing that blending tool across the raised part of that text. And so it really makes it pop out. And I love the black up against those colors. So now you can really see the texture of the uh, left there from the embossing paste. So now I'm playing with some Clearly for Art and Newsprint. These are two products from Wendy Vecchi and Gel Medium. I'm going to sandwich those together, which I've done here. And so I've got this newsprint on the top, the clearly for art on the bottom. And you can see how well that gel medium works so you don't get any bubbling or anything like that. So I have my uh, brand new oxide inks. These are totally fun and absolutely in love with them. My heat tool and some water. So I'm just putting some color down on my nonstick craft sheet. And the only thing I'm trying to do now is really create a background. I'm just coloring this up. Now, this is a little bit interesting because the newsprint paper is very porous and the color immediately soaks in. You're not going to get any movement here. You can spray it with the water and you can get some water drops, but this ink is not going to blend and bleed and move like it would on a watercolor paper or a coated cardstock. So just know that if you use this product, 
um, the newsprint product, that's what's going to happen. And the newsprint on its own would be too flimsy of a paper to use, but it worked really well with, uh, you know, uh, married with the clearly for art. So I'm just adding a little bit more uh, water here so I can pick up some of that yellow and the orange. And I, the thing I like about these oxide inks is the chalky finish, uh, very opaque. Love it. It's gorgeous. And that you can lay the colors one on top of the other, and then but you can still see all of them. Really great look. So all I'm doing is creating the background for what I keep calling a butterfly, but really it's a moth. But truth be told, I hate moths. So on my card, it's a butterfly dog on it. It's not a moth, even though that's really what it is. <laughs> so I'm just finding some placement here. Um, I am going to use the vintage photo oxide ink to uh, add my stenciling. Uh, I think distress inks have to be my one of my favorite mediums with stencils because it's just it's so quick and easy. Great to create backgrounds um, or in this uh, case you know I'm using this butterfly as a um, you know as a focal point on my card. So just adding a few more layers here and the more you add uh, it gets a little bit deeper. I probably should have held this down but look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my goodness. And I love the brown with those colors. It all just blends together so well. So I just used some strong scissors to cut out the butterfly, but now you can see, ah, the color mixing there is not so great. So now I got some white gesso and we're gonna have a really happy accident. Little watered down gesso and oh, because it's going over Distress Ink, not the oxide, but the other, just a regular Distress Ink, what I get is a little bit of blending of all those colors. So I end up still kind of with that pinkish background, but now it's muted because of the gesso, and I like that much more. Um, I don't mind that pink or that yellow in the background. It just was a little too busy and it didn't, it was a big clash uh, for the uh, butterfly, AKA moth. Um, so just drawing that off. And now you can kind of see those colors, but everything's been pushed to the back and I like that a lot more. So now I thought I'd really like to add some uh, gold and this is gorgeous. This is the brand new iridescent gold. It's a heavy body acrylic and I did make sure I had a very dry brush when I applied this. Uh, so I, you know, you can always add more, you can't always take away. So look at that beautiful shine that is on the top of the card. And I liked it so much, I needed to add more. So I went a little more heavy handed on some of the corners there. And it was just, it's gorgeous. It's so pretty in person because it's very subtle shine, uh, but makes that um, the embossing really pop. And you can see the little, the little bits of pink coming through. It's gorgeous. So that is uh, just about done. I'm gonna set that aside to dry and kind of clean up my craft sheet here so I don't end up with paint all over everything, which I have a tendency to do. Uh, so I started out by adding just a few little white highlights with a Dilutions paint pen, but you will see in the end that this is going to be completely covered up because I really mm -hmm. changed what I did with the stenciling part of the uh, butterfly. And the white, just so you know, the white, when you use it on top of the distressing, it does fade back a little bit. So it looks very bright white when you first apply it, and then it will fade back. You'll still see some uh, highlight, but it won't be quite as dark as it looks when you first use the pen. And it's really even tough to see here on the video. Um, it's not super obvious. So I just felt this was a little too soft. The brown was a little too soft, beautiful. I really liked it, but um, I ended up going over the whole thing with the black, which I think made it pop. You know, that butterfly really popped a little bit more. So I have a die cut uh, piece of text here, text paper, and I'm just going over that very lightly with some gesso. And that is just to knock some of that text into the background. Um, I think this is an old history book. And sometimes the words you think, what is that, you know, on my card kind of doesn't go. So I just want to kind of, you know, knock that back a little bit. And so a little layer of gesso is a great way to accomplish that. Okay. 
And now, of course, because I can't live without a little bit of uh, brown on the edge of everything, I am adding just a little bit, really just on the edge. I don't want that brown extending onto that circle very much. So just very carefully going around there because it's very uh, delicate paper. So just so it gives a little bit of a contrast. And now I am just gonna use my finger to apply some gel medium. Um, because this paper, this is from an old antique book, the paper tears really easily. So uh, sometimes it's easier to use your finger to apply the glue instead of a brush. I feel like you got a better, better uh, layer there when you use your finger, better coverage, I think. Just giving that a very quick dry, which will dry really quickly because the paper is so thin. And I'm just gonna cut off the excess. Look at that gold shimmer. You can see it really well there. And now my little butterfly has a place to live. So here's the fun part about Clearly for Art. It is moldable. So once you heat Clearly for Art, it will get very soft and then you can mold uh, the wings in this case or flower petals in any shape that you want. I love this stuff. And if you don't like, if you get something that's wanky, you don't like it, you can heat it and flatten the whole thing back out again. But look at that amazing dimension that you get. And when it dries, it is completely hardened. It will stay like that and not move. Okay, so I'm almost finished with my card. I'm gonna use the Be Creative uh, sentiment from this stencil. And if I was thinking clearly before I started, I would have, um, attached this uh, onto the nonstick craft sheet with some painter's tape. Because once I started, I thought, hey, I could stencil out a whole bunch of sentiments here onto my tag and then just cut them out when I need them. But of course, what happened is I moved, I shifted a little bit and I was able to get everything lined back up again, but it would have been smarter for me to um, hold that down because the, the stenciling is very narrow and you kind of really need to move, you need to really squish the blending tool around to um, get the color through there. So, but there's an idea, you can get a whole tag full of sentiments. Now I wanted to give you a little tip about cleaning archival ink off of your stencils, rubbing alcohol, piece of cake, look at that, cleans it right up. I don't often clean the archival off because it is permanent and doesn't move, but you can, even if stuff's been on there for ages, you can use rubbing alcohol to remove that. So now I'm adding a little, just a little bit of that gold onto the wings, kind of give it that iridescent type, you know, uh, look. So pretty. And then I just get carried away because I love it. This paint is gorgeous. And all of the heavy body acrylics from the Crafters Workshop, I love them um, because they are, when it says heavy body, it is heavy body. They're thick, they have great coverage, they hold the shape, they're amazing. Love them. And then you can see I've added a teeny bit of water. I sprayed a little bit of water and that just helps to water that ink down a little bit so it stays transparent and it's not covering up the details of my butterfly, also known as a moth. <laughs> All right, so we're pretty much ready to assemble. I'm very quickly drying, not enough to make that um, clearly for art move at all. So I'm using a strong double-sided adhesive to attach that to my circle. And now I'm going to cut out my sentiment. And this is where I actually end up being very creative because I can't find a good spot for where to put my sentiment. And you'll see what I end up doing. And that was just um, on that manila tag, which I love that color. I really didn't like the sentiment way up high like that. I felt like it was too high. I really wanted it right where you see me putting it, but that didn't work because the butterfly was in the way. So I was creative. I cut the word creative apart. Um, so hopefully it's not totally corny this way, but um, I kind of thought it was fun. I asked my husband, can you still read this? And he said, yep, I can read it upside. You know, he was standing in my studio. I can read it upside down. So yeah, I think it'll be fine. So if it's totally corny, 
then you can leave me a comment and I blame my husband for everything because he told me it was okay. <laughs> so it's his fault. But the balance for me is much better this way. This is really where I wanted the sentiment to go. So sometimes you just have to make it work. So it is mounted on a piece of five by five top folding card. And that is it for me today. And you'll see the finished uh, product here uh, covered with the black. And thank you so much for joining me. Uh, happy crafting.